Father, we have come together tonight to study your word, expose our hearts to the word of God, to be built up for the days to come. We know that we live in dangerous times. We know that these are the days of evil and it's also the days of light. And so, Lord, every word that we hear from you, we need to be edified and built up and prepared for the for the wiles and the tricks and the methods of the devil so that we can continue to lead a victorious life and to get other people set free. So, Father, I thank you tonight for our word. I thank you for our guest speaker. We're certain to give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, tonight we have Titus Upham from Browning, a good brother, and he's going to share with us tonight the Bible study. Uh, brother Titus, it's all yours, bro. Amen. Just make sure your little face shows up on the screen. All right. Okay. Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening, bro. I want to share a little bit uh, out of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And talk a little bit about God's original plan for mankind. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so Genesis 1.26 says, And uh, God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion. And, you know, I was, one day I was driving, and I was kind of, I was driving up there by the mountains, and just looking at the beauty of the mountains around Glacier Park, and, and I was like, you know, God, I was thinking about the fall, and Adam and Eve, and, and everything that, that kind of went on there in the garden, and I was like, you know, God, if, um, if I was you, when that little skinny lady <laughs> reached for that fruit, you know, I'd have slapped her hands and I said, don't do that. Yeah. I'd have put a stop to it right there, God. And another thing I would have did, I wouldn't have made uh, mosquitoes. <laughs> so those are the two things that I would, I would have did. And the Lord kind of began to just kind of speak in my heart. And he said, read that again. Think about that. He says, when I said, let them have dominion. He said, I gave it to them. He said, they were in charge. You know, and the scripture says that God breathed into man the breath of life, and man became a living soul or a speaking spirit like God. Yeah. And you know, we were made in his image. We were made in his likeness. Yeah. Glory to God. And, and you know, and so, so we were, were really, you know, in the God class when he made us. And when he downloaded into, into mankind, you know, and breathed into them, you know, they had everything that they needed to carry out their assignment mm -hmm. that the Lord gave them it's there in the book of Genesis. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And the scripture says that, that the Lord planted this garden, and it says, and there he placed man. And he told man to work, or it's the word aragon. He said, manifest yourself. Manifest everything that you have and that I have put on the inside of you in this world. Praise the Lord. In this kingdom, in this garden, in this blessed place that I have given you. Glory to God. And so mankind had everything that they needed. And so God's original plan and purpose for us was us to replenish this earth. It was never God's will for us to ever leave that blessed place, that, that blessed kingdom, that blessed world. Praise the Lord, that, that garden where he put us. Amen. That was that was his desire for us. Mm -hmm. He says, how can you being earthly parents want to do good for your children? How much more your heavenly father for you? So we know that our heavenly father, when he made this earth, cancer was never part of the plan. That's right. Amen. Diabetes was never part of the plan. We were just talking about suicide earlier. Suicide was never a part of the plan. 
Poverty was never a part of the plan. So when he made that first world that he had on this earth, it was a blessed place. And so I guess if we could put a title to this Bible study tonight, it would be God's original plan, one earth in one world. Amen. One earth in one world. And so this one earth and this one world was God's desire for us. And we were to live in this blessed place, and we were to manifest all of the qualities that the Lord put on the inside of us and carry out our assignment that He gave us to replenish the earth. Amen. And you know, and, and for a while there, they began to move in their assignment. I mean, Adam began to name all the animals. Yeah. You know, they began to manifest their dominion. They began to manifest Aragon, bring forth what was already in them. Matthew twelve thirty five says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. You know, they were bringing forth good things. They were bringing forth the blessing. Amen. Of the Lord. It was all on the inside of them and they were manifesting it. Amen. And another little question I was asking the Lord, I was like, okay, God, this, this garden, this, this Eden, this blessed place here, this first world. You know, if my natural mind kind of kicks in every now and then, I'm like, God, if it was such a real blessed place, how did death get there? Because remember, he said, the day you eat of this tree, you will surely die. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Now, this is supposed to be the blessed place, this garden, this kingdom that you gave to Adam and Eve. Kingdom, you know, domain. The word uh, uh, dominion means the king's domain. It's a Hebrew word, rada, or kingdom. And so Adam and Eve had this beautiful kingdom that the Lord gave them. But he said that if you partake of the fruit from this tree, he says you would surely die. So I'm like, okay, now this is a blessed place. But now he mentions dying, so that means death is there. But So I was asking the Lord, how did death get there? I said, why would you even make death? He said, what is the opposite of life? I said, well, death. He said, I gave them eternal life, but the opposite of eternal life is death. The opposite of peace is chaos. You know, the opposite of prosperity is poverty. He says, I had everything there that they needed. He says, the key was obedience. If they would have walked in obedience, they would have never experienced death. They would have never experienced sickness and disease. They would have never experienced all of the negative if they would have manifested obedience that was already in them. Praise the Lord. Obedience was already there. They had everything that they needed. But one awesome thing about our our Lord is He did not make robots. See? So they had that ability to manifest their obedience. Or they had that ability to rebel against the Lord. And we know the story how they were beguiled uh, by the serpent, Mm -hmm. used of the devil. And eventually, they did rebel from the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Okay, and so when they did that, of course, death came. You know, I know Adam lived another 900 years. He didn't drop dead right there. But but death came because they severed the umbilical cord or the life flow from heaven into earth. That life flow that was coming into that first world, that kingdom, that beautiful garden, was severed. The life flow stopped. And when that happened, another world came into existence. Now this world, God did not want mankind to even know and understand and experience another kind of a world. He only wanted them to know the world of joy, peace, and power in the Holy Ghost. Isn't that right? He only wanted us to know His blessing and His prosperity and His eternal life. He only wanted us to walk in that dominion, power, and authority that He gave to His children. He wanted us to manifest all of those God qualities that He put on the inside of us as His children. Because we're in His image and we're in His likeness. We have got His creative abilities. We're in the God class. 
And so he wanted us to bring that forth. So he said, manifest yourself in the earth. Amen. He did not want them to rebel. That was not the plan. He did not want them to understand the darkness, the hurt, the pain, the chaos that rebellion opens the door to. But we know that when they rebelled, they did. They allowed that to happen. They allowed that to take place. And Satan became the god of this world. This world that they caused to come into existence. And each and every one of us, we were to be born in that first world. We were to be born in that blessed place. That was his desire. But we know that Adam and Eve, their first children, were born in another world. That Satan was now the god of. We know Cain and Abel were born in that world. That world of dysfunction. That world of hurt. That world of pain. It was not the plan of God for any of us to be born there, but we have all been born in a very dysfunctional world. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing about this world, this world will never be able to heal itself. It will never be able to redeem itself. It will never be able to restore itself. But you know, thank God the Lord had a plan. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he, His plan was that a Redeemer would come. Glory to God. A Redeemer would come. And that Redeemer would come and get back, the Bible says in Romans, the fifth chapter, what the first Adam lost, the second Adam would get it back. Yep. And I began to study about this first Adam and what he lost. Because in Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, there was no religions and God said it was good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There was no religion. And God said it was good. But you know, that, that first Adam, you know, he lost that kingdom. He lost that garden. He lost that blessed place. I wanted to, uh, I broke down that word. Uh, me and my friend, pastor friend of mine, and we were looking at that word. And, you know, it, the word garden has five meanings. Number one is spot. I'm kind of going fast here. Number two is open door. Number three is moment. Number four is delightful place. Number five is atmosphere. And when you put it all together, it can be said this way, the spot for the moment where the presence of God is an open door to heaven, a delightful place and atmosphere. Praise the Lord. So where Adam and Eve were in that kingdom, that garden, that first world, it was a blessed place. Mm -hmm. Bible says the Lord would come down in the cool of the day and walk and talk with Adam. And the Bible says that after they rebelled, it says, then they saw that, that they were naked and they were ashamed. Or in other words, they, they, they noticed that there was sin. Sin brings shame. And we know the story how they sowed fig leaves. They ran and they hid themselves among the trees because they heard the voice of God walking in the garden, walking in the blessed place. And the Lord asked, he says, Adam, where are you? Eve, where are you? And I'm like, Lord, why did you ask them that question? You're everywhere present. You knew exactly where they were. Why did you say, where are you? And the Lord said, because I was looking for kings. I was looking for people that moved in authority. I was looking for people that walked in obedience. I was looking for people that walked in dominion, power, glory to God. I was looking for people that moved, amen, and spoke, amen, creative things were in them. Praise the Lord that they had a kingdom language, a heavenly language. They spoke a word of faith and they got results. I was looking for these people, but now these guys are full of fear and they're running and they're hiding. He said, that was not who I made. I was looking for my image. I was looking for my likeness. I was looking for my children, praise God. And I said, where are they? Where did you go? Where's those kings that I put on the earth? But they lost that kingdom. They lost that first world. And because Adam and Eve fell from their place, dropped the ball of the plan of God, you and I were born into a very dysfunctional place. Yeah. Yeah. And from that time on, we begin to battle with the challenges 
of this fallen world, of this world that, that we have all been born into. Would have been wonderful to be born into that delightful place. Yeah, amen. Never to see death. I noticed I was comb combing my hair before I came to the years. I found three gray hair. <laughs> now, if I was born in that blessed place, I wouldn't have found none of those. <laughs> but this outward man is perishing because of this fallen world that I'm now born into. Okay, but that was never the plan of God. He wanted one earth with one blessed world, one blessed right, kingdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. One beautiful place where you can come and have that fellowship with his children. But we fast forward it, you know, 4,000 years later. I was like, okay, you know, the Lord, you know, Jesus, chapter 3, Genesis, the third chapter would have been a good place to come, or Genesis, the fourth chapter. <laughs> How come you didn't come in the fourth chapter? <laughs> yeah. How come you didn't even come in Abraham's day? Why did you have to wait all that time mm -hmm. and then come? He said, I had to come in the fullness of time. Fullness of time yeah. I had to come when everything was ready yeah. for me to return. Amen. Where people would begin to understand my concepts, my message, you know, what I was all about. And so, you know, when, when Jesus came, and, and we know that story, it's starting to snow, so that brings that back, that story, <laughs> that Christmas story. You know, he was coming to get back what Adam lost. What the first Adam lost, the second Adam was coming to get it back. That's right. And you know, that first Adam did not lose a religion. So Jesus, when he came, he didn't come in br to bring a religion because we didn't lose a religion, but we lost a kingdom. We lost a blessed place. We lost our God identity. We lost that dominion power that we had. And Jesus came to restore what the first Adam lost. And that was the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? That was to restore, amen, heaven's flow back into earth. Come on. Hallelujah. They severed it, but he says, I'm coming. Glory to God, and I'm going to reconnect. You are going to be reconnected back to the Father. Yeah. Glory to God through Jesus Christ. And so Jesus came. He was born of a virgin and, and grew up. And, and he began to, to go and his cousin John began to preach. And John began to preach, amen, make straight the way. Repent for, amen, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John began to preach. And Jesus showed up at one of John's baptism. Amen. John was blessed to see his cousin coming. Mm -hmm. Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Jesus said, John, baptize me. John said, I need to be baptized by you. I'm not even worthy enough to hold your sandals. And you want me to baptize you. Jesus said, baptize me. Amen. Glory to God. That righteousness might be fulfilled. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And John baptized Jesus and Jesus was taken out into the wilderness for 40 days and, and was tempted out there of the enemy. And the scripture says that Jesus returned. Amen. Glory to God. Matthew 4, 17, it says, And from that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, Jesus, in Jesus' day, there was, the, there was these denominations in his day. There was the Pharisees, there was the Sadducees, there was the Sanhedrin Council. There was these, these church organizations. But you know, when Jesus started his ministry, he didn't partner with none of those denominations. He began to preach the message that John preached. He was baptized, amen, into that message that John was preaching. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so Jesus didn't preach what the Pharisees were preaching. He didn't preach what the Sadducees were preaching. He didn't preach what, what the established religious organizations were preaching of his day because he was bringing something that we lost and it wasn't a religion, but we lost the kingdom that we had. And so from that time on, Jesus began to preach, amen, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
You know, Matthew, the 25th chapter, the 34th and 35th verse, it says, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom, prepared for you since the creation of the world. Amen. Amen. Take for you your inheritance prepared for you since the creation of the world. Glory to God. It was always God's plan for us to live in a blessed place. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. And so we see that we have two worlds now today. Amen. We have this world of darkness and the world of light. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And we that are born again, praise the Lord, we've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness back into the kingdom of His dear Son. Can you say amen? amen. So when we get saved and get born again, glory to God, we didn't join a church or a religion, but we step back into our rightful place and back into our rightful assignment that we have as believers in the earth. Can you say Amen. Amen. And the devil is very afraid of you and I. Yes. Glory yes. to God. He's afraid of us because, yes. amen, we are starting to wake up to who we are, amen, as kings and priests. Yes. We are starting yes. to wake up to who we are as citizens of the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. amen. And as we begin to understand and begin to realize that we're not a little religious group, but we really are a holy nation. Yes. We really are a royal priesthood. Can you yes. say amen? Yes. Yes. Glory to God. If, if we, amen, are kings and priests, uh, amen, then like our daddy, we can declare a thing. Come on. Uh, yes. We can make some declarations. Uh, we can decree some things. Praise yes. the Lord. Uh, we can, amen, speak the way our king spoke. Come on. Yes. Amen. Yes. We know yes. Jesus is a king. Come on. Yes. Amen. He's the standard setter. He set the standard and we are the standard keepers. Uh, and if he said, by by his stripes we are healed. Come on. Yeah. We speak that same word. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. We line up, amen, our mouth with the mouth of our king. Yes. Yes. Praise God. We begin to confess what our king said. Can you say amen? See, this is not a religious book. Amen. This is a legal book. Glory to God, and our King has already spoke some things forever. Oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Can you say amen? amen. And when we begin to understand what our King said, yes. we begin to line up our confession with what He said. Glory to God, He said, if I abide in you and you abide in me, come on. Yes. Amen. Yes. You shall ask what you will. Amen. And it will be done. Praise yes. the Lord. Amen. So as we begin to walk, amen, back, in our rightful place. We begin to abide again. Amen. In the kingdom that our king has so desired for us to walk in. Praise the Lord. We're going to begin to get the results that belong to us. Amen. As children of God. Matthew 10, 7. Jesus told his disciples. He says, and as you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven has returned. And as you go, preach this message, the kingdom of heaven has returned. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Everything that the Lord has provided for us has returned Amen. because of Jesus. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Matthew 24, 14, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Matthew 5, 3 and 4. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who are spiritually bankrupt, who's tried everything and everything's failed. He says, for the kingdom of God is made up of them. Yeah. Oh Glory to God. You have a loved one out there and you've tried everything with them and it looks like they're still not coming in and they might be on drugs tonight, they might be on alcohol or meth, whatever might be going on in their life and, and you're worried about them. The Bible says when they get to that place, they're blessed because they're about ready. Amen. To say, Lord, I surrender. <laughs> I want to come back. Amen. And return. You know, when people are on drugs, when people are, are doing these things, really, they're just trying to get home back. Amen. To the original world. Yes. Because they're looking for that peace that was lost. Yes. They're looking for the joy that Adam lost. Yes. Amen. They're looking for, amen, their true identity. Yes. And so they're searching and looking for love in all the wrong places. Everybody's searching for their utopia. But you'll never find that kingdom. Amen. Unless you go through the door, who is Jesus Christ? Can you amen. say amen? amen? So they're all looking out there right now in this world. They're looking for that joy that we found. 
Amen. They're looking for what we've already found. Right. Amen. They want to get back home. And they're searching in every way to get home. Amen. They're looking for that love. They're looking for that peace. They're looking for that healing. They're looking for that identity. I mean, they're searching everywhere out there. They're searching in education. Amen. They're searching yeah. for it in money. They're yeah. searching for it in careers, in relationships. Yeah. You name it. They are looking. Jesus said from the time of John the Baptist until now, people have violently pursued the kingdom of God. Violently going after it in the meth lab, the meth house. Amen. Violently looking for it in the bars. Violently searching. Amen. But what they lost. Why are we looking? Because it's in our spiritual DNA to search. We know there's something better. Yeah. Everybody out there knows there's something better. Right. They're looking for something better because it's in their DNA. Mm -hmm. And they search and they search and they search. The only place they're going to find it is in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's the only way they're going to get back home to mm -hmm. this world, to that blessed world. Glory to God. Matthew 6.33, the priority of Jesus. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. He said, I know what the world's looking for. You're searching for it all. He says, but seek first the kingdom of God and your right standing, amen, with his government, and all these things will be added on to you. It's already been provided for us. Praise the Lord. Healing is already there. Amen. Everything that we need is already there in the blessed place. Amen. Glory to God. He says, but you seek it first. And you seek your right stand. You seek righteousness. Amen. With God, he says, and all these things will be added unto you. Scripture says in uh, Matthew, the fourth chapter, in the 23rd verse, it says, And Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease among the people. Luke 4.43 Jesus said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to other towns also. This is powerful right here. Because that is why I was sent. Mm -hmm. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. You know, that religious leader, Nicodemus, the Bible says, came to Jesus by night. Over there in John, the third chapter. And he says, Rabbi, we know that you're a man come from God, for nobody can do these signs or do these miracles that you do except God be with him. And so they were watching him, these religious leaders. They were watching Jesus. And they were watching him move in dominion. Amen. And walk the way Adam was assigned to walk in the earth. They watched him take dominion over the elements, over the wind, over the sea. They watched him walk on water. They watched him take dominion even over a fig tree, cursed it and dried up at the roots. They watched him take dominion over sickness and disease. Amen. They watched him take dominion over demon spirits and cast them out of people. They even saw him take dominion over death and stand, amen, at the tomb of Lazarus. Say, Lazarus, come forth. I mean, they watched him walk, amen, in this dominion power on the earth. And they said, nobody can do what you do except God be with you. What is this that you have? <laughs> Jesus said, Nicodemus, marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Come on. You must be born from above. He says, if you're not born again, you will not even see the kingdom of God. That's right. He says, you'll never understand. You, you see the signs and wonders. I was reading that, you know, Pastor, and I began to realize that, you know, uh, unbelievers will see the signs and the wonders, but they are not going to understand how it happened, where it came from, what, what is really taking place. Mm -hmm. They'll see the signs and wonders, but they will not understand the principles of the kingdom of God. That's right. And so these guys, they, were un they weren't believers, but they saw the signs and the wonders that Jesus did. 
And so they came to him. They said, what is this? Jesus says, you'll never see it. You'll never know it unless you be born into it. He says, you see what's happening, but unless you're born into it, you'll never see it. He says, and unless you're born of the spirit and of water, you'll never walk in it. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Unless you get immersed into my message. Amen. Unless you grab a hold of my word and be baptized into my word. Get so baptized into Jesus Christ. Amen. And get filled with his Holy Spirit who will lead and guide us into all original information. Can you say amen? All amen. truth. Amen. He says you will never walk in it. So many promises in this word, but people are not walking in it because they're not led by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, they don't understand truth. Come on. They've never been baptized into Jesus' message. They got religion. They got a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Amen. But it's time we get baptized in. Amen. To what Jesus is doing in the earth today to his children. Can you say amen? amen. Say, Lord, I want to be a part of that. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. So he told Nicodemus, unless you've been baptized, amen, and filled with the Spirit, he says, you'll never step into the blessing. You'll never walk in the blessing. You know, Paul the Apostle, he said in the Romans, the 15th chapter, he said, when I return unto you, I'm persuaded that I, amen, am coming in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on. Yes. Amen. Well, Paul knew what Jesus was preaching. Jesus was preaching the kingdom that Adam lost has been restored. Can you say amen? Your rightful place back with God, amen, has been restored. You are now seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. We got our rightful place back because of Jesus. Amen. And Paul said, I'm going to walk in the fullness of that blessing. I'm going to walk in the fullness, amen, of the gospel, of the message of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so Jesus told Nicodemus, he says, unless you're born again, you'll never see it, nor will you step into it. Amen. He says, as the, as the wind blows, he says, you don't know which way the wind came and what happened. All you see, the wind blew through and you see all the leaves moving and, you know, grass blowing and cold on the line going. He says, you see the effects of the wind, but you don't know where it came from or where it went. He says, that's the way a man people of the kingdom of God are. He says, you see me moving in a dominion power. You see the manifestations, a man of heaven's culture, but you don't know where it came from. You don't know how it happened. Jesus says, when you see demons cast out, a man, you know that the kingdom of God has arrived. Amen. Praise the Lord. He says it shows up. He says people see the manifestations of it, but they don't understand it or where it came from. All they know is something happened. Mm -hmm. Sometimes new people will come to church with me for the first time and they'll just be like, I don't know, Pastor, I, I cried all the way through service. I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> Amen. The kingdom of God is all over them. The love of God. Amen. God's nature is flowing through them. And they don't understand what's happening. All they know is they're feeling this joy. They're feeling this happiness. They're leaving edified and built up. Can you say amen? It's like they got a drink of water for the first time. Being in a dry and a thirsty place. And so Jesus came to restore what that first Adam lost. And that first Adam lost a kingdom. Amen. And he came to get it back. Yes. Praise the Lord. And so when we get saved, amen, we leave the, this dark world, this kingdom of darkness, this fallen world, and we come back home, amen, to the kingdom of God. Not heaven. We're, we'll go to heaven one day. But when you get saved, amen, you're going back home to your rightful place to pick up where Adam dropped the ball and continue on with the plan of God. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord. He says the first Adam fell, but you are going to take it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And so when we give our lives over to Jesus Christ, that's what we're doing. We're just stepping back in to the rightful place that he called us to be his agents in the earth. Amen. And we begin to walk back in that dominion power, that authority that we have as kingdom citizens, as believers in the king. Amen. You know, the disciples, they told Jesus, they said, 
You know, they were with him and they, they saw the miracles. They saw him open blind eyes. They saw him walk on water. They saw him cast out devils, raise the dead. But they didn't ask him to show them how to open blind eyes. That's probably what I would ask. Could you show me how to open blind eyes? Because if I can open even five blind eyes, I'll be on TVN. He's a <laughs> worldwide ministry. Can you just show me that? <laughs> or maybe even walk on water <laughs> when it's not froze or 40 below. You know, but they didn't ask him, show us how to do this, how to, how to walk on water, how to open blind eyes. You know what they told Jesus? Teach us how to pray. Amen. Teach us how to pray. And over there in, in Matthew, the sixth chapter, in the ninth verse, Jesus said, okay, this is how you're going to pray. Pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Glory to God. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Glory to God. He said, this is how I want you to pray. You see, that prayer is a reconnection prayer. Adam severed the life flow. Jesus says, when you pray that prayer, you're reconnecting, amen, heaven's flow back into earth. Can you say amen? Heaven's flow back into our life. Heaven's joy and peace and prosperity and blessing and health, amen, back into us, glory to God. Yes. And we watered that down to some cute little religious prayer, but it's really a prayer to reconnect uh, what yes. Adam severed. Can you yes. say amen? Yes. Yes. To let the eternal life of God be restored and flow back into you and I. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so Jesus said, this is how I want you to pray. Glory to God. Amen. Thy kingdom. Jesus is trying to get heaven back to earth. Come on. And we're trying to get out of earth to heaven. <laughs> and he said, what you guys doing? I'm trying to get heaven down there. Amen. Experience days of heaven on earth. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is his desire. Come on. We're all trying to get out of here. <laughs> you know, I'll throw this in. One of the reasons why God provided healing it's to keep us in the earth a little bit longer, amen, to carry out our assignment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why he provided healing. Yes. Amen. I tell the people back home, I said, when we get saved, and if we're just getting saved to go to heaven, you know, then when we water baptize you, we should hold you under until there's no more bubbles. <laughs> Lay your corpse over there. Okay, next. <laughs> they, would, they got saved to go to heaven, so they're in heaven. Who's next? <laughs> so we're going to see too many people <laughs> getting water baptized. <laughs> But the Lord saves us, redeems us, amen, brings us back into the kingdom because he's got an assignment for you yes, and I yes, in the yes, earth. Can you say amen? Yes, Glory to God. Yes. He, amen, he is still going to have, amen, a nation of kings and priests. Yes, yes, yes. Glory to God. He's still going to have a holy nation. That was his plan in the beginning. That was his purpose for us, amen, and it has never changed. That's right. That's right. Praise the Lord. Amen. He's still going to have children that walk in his image and in his likeness. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we are very blessed. Amen. amen. We are very blessed to know, amen, the king and how we know yes. him. Amen. And we're beginning to learn, glory to God, how to, you know, we've been away from home for so long, thousands of years, yes. from that rightful place that we forgot how to be royal. Yeah. We forgot how to walk in dominion power. We forgot how to move in our authority. Yes. yes. We forgot the language. Yes. Amen. And so when we get back home, amen, we come out of the, the kingdom of darkness and we get born again and translated into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of his dear son, we begin to learn again how to be kings and priests. We begin to renew our mind. We begin to be transformed. Amen. When Jesus, his first message he preached, he says, repent or change your way of thinking. Glory to God. The kingdom has returned. Glory to God. And you're not going to get a man from God through religion. You're not going to get it from God through education. You're not going to get what you're looking for. Amen. In money or anything else. He says, change your way of thinking. You're only going to get it when you return back home. Everything you've been seeking. And so when we get saved, we start renewing our mind. Uh, we start getting, amen, our language back. We, instead of speaking doubt, we start to speak faith. Amen. Instead of speaking fear and defeat, we start to speak victory. I mean, we start to, we got to learn how to talk all back over. Yeah. Because yeah. we speak death. We yeah. speak negativity. Come on. Yeah. 
We speak defeat. I mean, we, we talk like that old world talked. But we're king's kids now. And we've got to learn the language again. Amen. That, that heaven taught. And how God talks. He calleth those things that be not as though they are. And he still wants us to learn how to speak the same way. A few years ago, I was in Branson, Missouri, and they were having a, a dedication to Billy Brim's Prayer Mountain. And uh, we went down there for it. And uh, they gave a few of us each uh, five minutes to get up and speak. And that night, Brother Copeland was the, the guest speaker. So I had my little notes that I was going to share. And I had it timed down to five minutes. and wanted to be, you know, excellent. <laughs> Not on Indian time. <laughs> And they had that camera there, you know, and they went. So they had us, and me and my cousin, he pastors in Washington, Jeff Yellow Owl, we were both there. And Jeff said what he was going to say, he had his down to five minutes too. And now Jeff, we're going to be excellent now, but the Copeland's going to preach, and you know, we don't want to go on and go on, you know. We want to get up there, have something to say, you know, and uh, hit a home run tonight. So we were ready, you know. So I had everything down, and as I was sitting on the front row, and they then they called me up to come up and share. As I started to walk, the Lord said, I want you to talk to them about, amen, the importance of speaking the language, the kingdom language. Amen. And I was like, they all speak in tongues, God. They're all spirit-filled. <laughs> I said, they all know how to speak in tongues. He says, no, I'm not talking about their heavenly language, their kingdom language. And I was like, okay, so we're, I'm trying to have this dialogue from here to the stage, and it's only, you know, 15, 20 feet away, and I don't know what the kingdom language is. All I know is they all speak in tongues. And what am I going to tell you? You guys all need to get filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. They all speak. They all understand. They all move into gifts, you know. But when I got up there and, uh, and I began to understand what the Lord wanted me to say, now that we're back home, we've got to begin to learn to talk, amen, like our king. Yes. Praise the Lord. We've got to learn, amen, to change our words because I'll tell you something. Words are very powerful. Yes, they are. Amen. And as kings and priests, you, not just God, but us right here. You know, our words have power in them. Yes. If we really understand the power in our words, amen, because we have that same authority. Mm -hmm. We have that same power. Can you say amen? amen? You shall decree a thing and it shall be established yeah. unto you. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so we've really got to begin to understand the power of words because when you say something, you know, the old enemy and those demon spirits out there, they don't, they don't know our number. That you're just joking. Oh, you tickled me to death. All they heard was death. <laughs> they didn't know if it was a joke or not. That's right. They picked up on the word death. Right. They're moving. Right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. So this is why we have to guard our tongues. This yeah. is why we have to learn to speak the language of the kingdom. Amen. Because it's a powerful language. Praise the Lord. You know, and I was like, God, how come you don't always speak audibly anymore? You know, all here you spoke audibly a lot. How come, you know, we don't hear your audible voice? The Lord says, because once I make decrees, i got to carry them out. He says, I, I made and I spoke. And if you want to hear the audible voice, read it out loud. <laughs> well, okay, all right. <laughs> I hope you want to hear that audible voice. <laughs> That's good. But, you know, this, amen, this word, when we begin to line up our mouth with what the king said, amen. we're going to get the desired results that the king wants us to have. Praise amen. God. amen. amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. So, we are so blessed, amen, to be part of the kingdom of God to be saved and born again in such a time as this. Amen. Praise the Lord to understand that in the kingdom of God, amen, we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Yes. We're not moved by what we were moved in in this world. We are now in a new family. Yes. Praise the Lord. And we get changed and renewed and restored. Amen. We have returned and received. and Amen. We get all what we lost back. Amen. That's why you get all the prefixes of God. Repent, restore, amen, return, redeemed. Praise the Lord. Everything was getting back. You know, before Jesus left, he went to his disciples and he breathed on them and he said, receive the Spirit again. Amen. Receive what Adam and Eve had in the very beginning. You now got it back. Praise the Lord. 
Yeah. Hey Amen. Jesus said, my father has put a kingdom on me. He told the disciples, now I put a kingdom on you. Yes. Wow. Wherever we go, the kingdom of God goes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Wherever we go, we take the culture of heaven. Isn't that right? Yes. Yes. Praise yes. God. We take heaven's joy, heaven's peace, heaven's power, heaven's authority. Everywhere, amen, we go. We are those ambassadors. Yes. Hey man, you know, an ambassador is different than a representative or a senator or whatever. An ambassador, he is the country. Hey man, Paul says we're ambassadors. Hey man, we are the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise the Lord, wherever we go, the kingdom of God goes. Amen. You know, and I'll close with this, you know, when Jesus would show up, we would wonder why people got healed, demons got cast out, things happened. But what was happening when Jesus was showing up, what he came to do was overthrow another kingdom. Amen. Yeah. And that's why demons were getting cast out, because they were illegally holding people in bondage. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Sickness, amen, is part of an oppression of another government. Yeah. See, what's happening in our world today, there's two governments. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen taking place, the government of darkness, the kingdom of darkness, and the kingdom of light. Right. Yeah. Amen. And the only thing that can overthrow this government mm -hmm. is another government. Amen. That's why Isaiah tells us in the ninth chapter, he said, unto us a son is given, unto us a child is born, the government will be upon his shoulder, yes. and right. of his amen. kingdom there will be no oh, end. Can you say amen? amen? So everywhere Jesus goes, he is the government. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. He is everything that that government you, is. Father. And he overthrows, amen, that other government's mm -hmm. power mm -hmm. that has people in bondage. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. You know, a lion that's in a jungle, he'll walk around. He don't care if a hippopotamus makes a noise or a bird makes a noise or even if a hyena laps around. <laughs> don't really bother that king of the jungle, you know. The thing that gets his attention is when another king, yeah. another lion roars. Yeah. Yeah. He says, uh-oh, yeah. somebody else showed up. Yeah. Amen. That's the way Satan is. When Jesus showed up, he saw another king coming. And he knew what he was coming for. Come on. He was coming to get back what he deceived Adam and Eve out of. Amen. He knew Jesus was coming to overthrow his government. Glory to God. And liberate us and set us free. Can you say amen? amen. amen. Set up free those who have been in bondage. Open the prison doors. Yes. Glory to God and say, yes. come back home. Yes. Amen. The door has been opened. Eternal life has been returned. Praise the Lord. Your joy, your peace, your dominion, your authority, it's all back. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Well, that's my message. Oh, very good. <laughs> Short and sweet. Amen. Amen. <laughs> hey, we'll enjoy this good coffee. <laughs>